What I'm sharing actually was provoked by uh, the theme for the young people, return. Uh, return. Be because returning simply means there was a place you were before, so you are coming back. Um, in the Bible, there are so many other words that are used to mean the same. For example, when we say possessing the land that was a promise of the children of Israel was because the land was theirs. It's just a matter of take it, claim it, go have it, is already yours. And I want to share today from the book of Joshua, and I'm looking at chapter 1, and I'll be looking at verse 1 to 18, pole pole. But I want to start by saying, if you went to a bookshop today, the books, the Christian bookshop, if you went there, sometimes you might think uh, they make Christianity very easy. It's like uh, an easy thing. They don't talk about battles. They talk about victories. What they don't tell you is that there is no victory without a battle. But they don't want to scare you. Because a lot of us, as long as it's a battle, ikai. But there is nothing that in, Christ, in, in our walk with God that is free or cheap. From the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. Joshua is taking the children of Israel to the promised land. But this land was already given to Abraham in Genesis 12 and verse 7. So in other words, it's like telling them, let's return, let's go back to what was already ours. Let's return to what was already ours. But as I said a little earlier, anything that we, we have and anything that is good in God you must struggle for it. You must fight for it. Actually, the other time I said, even for a good family, there must be some fight. Because families are a threat. You know, if you, if you are here in the first service and you received the letter like we were told by a pastor that was speaking here, it looks good. You know, and the reading of that letter many times. But those letters to arrive, it took seven days to get there. So if somebody had loved you seven days ago, chances are, if they said they were missing you and they were not sleeping, chances are, by the seventh day they have already started sleeping, after all. Because by the time they'll get the letter back, it will take 14 days. However, picking from what the speaker said, as long as you know who wrote it, there are some people that cherish those letters. If you find it, you keep it. Because first of all, it did not have a lot of kizungumingi. It was easy. With a heart and an arrow piercing through the heart. Ephesians 6 and verse number 12. You know, we, we are fighting. There, is, there are principalities and powers that we are fighting. And we know we are not a match to the devil. We know that. But we know that our God is powerful. He that is in us is greater. First John 4, 4. He is greater than he that is in the world. So in this book, we find that Moses... The great leader of Israel has died. And I tell you, there is, and nowadays I've, I've kept on saying this. Even when they tell you your shoes is so big, they cannot feel it. Go to that office after one week. Your seat has someone. Sitting on your seat. Kibera. Were you an MD? 
they will bring one immediately, they will call him acting. And if he asks for four months, they will confirm the person. If your shoes were so big to fill it, that seat would be empty. But, Bishop, if you left us, we'll have another senior pastor here the following couple of Sundays. We might have the bishop of the city of Nairobi send in a few some of the senior pastors, but I tell you the truth, within a short while, Takuaivio, So, so Joshua, he, Moses is dead and Joshua is told, now that my servant is dead, arise now, take these people, take them, cross over to Jordan and take that which land is yours. As I thought about this, I remembered a song we used to sing in the early 70s, which was not really gospel, but it was an excitement and an encouragement for us that were evangelists. It used to say, this land is my land. From Lake Victoria towards Mombasa. Kilimanjaro to the northern frontier. This land was made for you and, and for me. It would encourage us that we can go all over so that we can go and minister and teach and reach the people of God because this land is my land. And I think... This land is my land. Joshua, this land is your land. Canaan is our land. Canaan is our land. But for us to have this victory, there are three truths given here that we need to understand this morning as we look at this thought claiming you are canon. Verse 1 to 9, and I will read verse 1 to 4. Verse 1 to 4. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I'm giving to you, the, to, giving to them the children of Israel. <laughs> Every place that the sole of your foot will trod upon, I have given you. As I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. A call to claim the land. In this verse, Joshua is reminded that the land, the Lord has already given the land of Canaan to the children of Israel. Joshua was commanded to lead the people into Canaan and claim the land they had been promised by the Lord. The land was given to them, as I said, Genesis 12, verse 7. And the promise was reaffirmed to every succeeding generation of the nation of Israel. The land was indeed their land. There was no need for them to continue their wandering around. The land was theirs. But the Bible records and tells us they wandered. The land was theirs. Could it be possible that you have a promise given to you, but you are still wandering? You are still going around and around wandering. And as you look at us as Christians today, a lot of us are actually wondering. There is a promise, but you are still wondering. We struggle. We are struggling with defeat. We are struggling with the sin. For all intent and purposes, we are wandering around a spiritual wilderness. And yet God has said, I, have, I want you to have victory. Romans 8 and verse 37, if somebody can put it on the screen for us. Romans 8 and verse 37. What does the Bible try to encourage us? Romans 8, 37. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 
How about 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 57? These are promises. God has promised to you and to me. The land is ours. The promise is ours. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 57. So I believe with all my heart that God did not save you or save me to be defeated. Yes, but most of the time we are wandering in the wilderness as we wait for 1 Corinthians 15 verse 57. It's still coming. If it hasn't arrived, it's just about there it is. 57. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory. He gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we thank him. And therefore, I think God is calling us, calling these children of Israel, a call to go and claim the land, but there is also another call. A call to have confidence in the Lord. So it it is not just calling us to claim, because, you know, there are some... I met somebody uh, somewhere, and he introduced me this way. This guy was gorilla. He used to preach with the gorillas. They would terrorize and possess people things. And I looked at him. The other one told him, no, this, is, this was a good type. Because for sure I never possessed anybody's thing. The promise of possessing is there. But you claiming it there. But you need confidence. So God is calling the children for confidence. A call to have confidence in the Lord. Joshua chapter 1 verse 5 and 6 and verse number 9. In verse number 5, there is a promise of victory over our enemy. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses. So I will be with you. I will not leave you. In other words, here you are. Have confidence In me, there is promise of victory over every enemy. In the same verse, the promise of the presence and the power of God, he will never leave us. He will not forsake us. In the same verse, it is trying to tell us that God is faithful. Don't keep wondering. Don't just claim it. Have confidence in the Lord. Who has promised? You know, I remember the joke that was shared here a couple of years ago of this boy who was waiting for a bus but in the wrong place. Another old man comes and says, young man, where are you going? Uh, I'm waiting for a bus. And the man is trying to tell the the boy, don't wait here. The stage is over there. But the boy says, no, 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 no. The bus will stop here. So the, the man went to wait for the bus over there, but the bus came and stopped and the boy entered. So the old man entered and is asking the boy, you had a lot of confidence the bus would stop. Why did you have that confidence? He said, my father told me to stand there. Who is your father? The bus driver. (laughs) You know, the truth of the matter is the bus driver is your father. He will stop anywhere, including Zimmerman. But you need to trust him. There is a call to claim. You can claim anything, but you need to trust God as you claim it. So there are some of you that have been claiming and nothing is happening. We need to shift our gears and now start having confidence in God. He that has promised, he is faithful and is going to bring it to pass. In verse number 6, if you can read it, something is repeated. Be strong and of good courage, for to these people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I sow to their forefathers to give them. Be strong. The word here is that God is going to give them absolute victory. There is no way you're going to divide it. Absolute victory comes from the Lord. And of course, in the same verse 6, the promise of God to keep his promise. God is not like a man. What he has said he will do, brother, he will do. And I want to bring to you, I want to bring to you, not a suggestion, but I want to tell you. That he, our God, 
in John 5, 4 and 5, he still gives us victory today of our enemies. In Matthew 28, verse 18, he is still ever-present and he's still over-powerful. He is still faithful. Matthew 28, 20, he's still faithful. He still gives absolute victory. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57, he still keeps his promise. God who has promised us, he will bring it to pass. A call to claim, a call to have confidence in that God, and thirdly, a call to carry out the law. The Lord tells Joshua verse 7 and 8 that if he is to lead the people of God to possess Canaan, then he had to take heed of the law of God. Remembering the law is an essential step to entering our Canaan as well. Notice that the Lord tells Joshua about the law and how this applies to our lives today. Verse number 7, he was to keep the law. He was to do everything the law said to him, nor turning to the left nor to the right. Verse 8, he was to meditate on the law day and night. His mind was to be occupied with the law. He was to love it and to let it fill his heart and mind. And this was in order that his life might be centered in the law and therefore in the will of God. He was to prosper by honoring the law. Is there a lesson for us this morning from that? Well, I first would say yes, there is. And the lesson that I'm learning from here is that even today, I've been called to feed in the word of God. I've been called to live by the word of God. I've been called to meditate upon the word of God. I've been called to believe in the word of God. I've been called to seek my blessing in the word of God. A call to claim it. A call to have confidence. And a call to have the law of the Lord in, in me. And finally, a call to courage in leadership. Verse 6a, 7a, and 9a, you will read that. In the midst of these things, the Lord tells Joshua to do three things. God himself encourages Joshua to be strong and courageous. These words carry the idea of standing firm and strong in the face of opposition. Joshua would need great courage to face the enemies of Israel and to lead the people to victory in the promised land. He has to be courageous. And I think God is telling us, even today, my brother, my sister, like I, say, I said last Sunday, some of us drift away. There are so many things that we drift away. And we drift so far, sometimes we don't even understand what caused us to drift but we just discover we have gone away from the love of God and what we believed him. So first of all, we have been called to claim it. The call is from God. And the reason why God calls us is because there is a challenge. A challenge. After Joshua receives his challenge from the Lord without hesitation, he goes to the people and tells them that the time has come to take their land. First, he challenges the nation as a whole, and then he addresses a specific group within the nation of Israel. A challenge to be ready. I think one of the, 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 the things that I have loved about um, walking with the Lord and listening to many people, actually, I have come to, 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 to echo this uh, slogan, that uh, an old man who died not long ago uh, in his um, eulogy, they said that he, he, he knew many things. That's what they said about him. This man lying here knew many things. But he used to say, I know many things, but there are many things that I also don't know. In other words, he could not brag himself up to know all things. He knew some, but he needed others to help him. And as a leader, you need to know that. You have to be, have a challenge to be ready. Be ready. Because opportunities favor 
the prepared. You have to be ready. You have to be ready. You have to be ready. An opportunity comes for a high school. And you have been believing God for a high school. And what the principals are asking you, because they know some of you would want to have five schools. They are telling you, I give you 48 hours. You go pay, come with a sleep. So I, I'm sure there are some people that will have many schools, but they might miss the school. If I were you, I would rather take the child first. Arafu niwe nikicheza na makaratazi badai. Kwa sababu kikosa shule utakosa. Na utalaumu watu wengi. There is a challenge for readiness. And this is also true for us today. Before we can enter our canon, we have to prepare for that land. The way we live must change. We must prepare ourselves for the place where we are going. Friends, we are going to heaven and we have to be ready for it. Because heaven, we are going. And, but heaven, we have to be prepared for it. What, have you, what will you have to do to get ready for Canaan? I think there are a couple of things that I think are critical to you and to me. First of all, is challenge to responsibility. Now Joshua addresses the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. And you know, yesterday in our G12, as we, you know, I, I just uh, bumped into uh, a scripture. Uh, the Gardenites did not get their inheritance until way deeper in, in the book of Judges. But they had to fight the altar that was lifted up by Micah. Micah had even a priest, had hired his own Levite to be a priest. But even at that time, they had not possessed it. And I was telling the G12 men that there could be areas that you have not been able, you are like a gardenite, you haven't gotten it yet. But there are some altars then that we need to destroy. Because it is when we destroy all the altar, then the altar of the Lord get preeminence in our lives and fights the battles for us. So there is a powerful lesson here that although he was looking for these two and a half tribes, he was trying to tell them what is going to happen. The primary thing that motivates them was that although they were not to get it at that time, although they were not going to get it as quickly as they thought they could, although there were some things that were going to happen to some of them, but others were going to wait, the thing is they had to be responsible, fight the battle with others until every one of them had gotten a place for themselves. Canaan. Canaan. Canaan is a promise. Remember, Moses is telling them there is a land flowing with milk and honey. He had not been there. But he knew that there was a land that was flowing with milk and honey. Heaven, we know, is a good place. But you and I have not gone there. But we've been taught by the word of God and those that have gone before us. So what is, what is this canon thing? If I'm going to return, how do I return? And I want to pick from uh, the Joshua and what he's telling the children of Israel. Two, three things and then I'll be done. Commitment from the people. This is important for you and I. Number one, they committed themselves to a life of surrender. You know, our country is, is, is very interesting. And, and, and um, shifts, people change a lot. You know, when you travel to some of these countries, uh, right now, when there are elections, churches put, put they are, it is easier for you to know what they believe in. But in our country, sorry to say, the bottom up or the bottom down or whatever it is, everybody is in it. So if you say bottom up is better, they all go bottom up. Handshake is better, they all go handshake. Right now we have no opposition in this country. Did you know that? Or oh, some of you have no idea, you don't even care. Please start caring. 
Because if there is no opposition in parliament, then it simply means some things can be passed. So what kind of prayer then would you pray? You pray, let there be confusion in the camp. Yeah. So that w- when they say this, another one says no, and another one says, but they are all in it. As I surrender to God, as I give my life to the Lord, God is going to give me victory, but I have to know my victory can only come from him. So they commit themselves to a life of surrender. These people make their stand with the Lord. They promise absolute obedience and absolute surrender to the will of God. Do you want to get to your canon? Do you want to get to your promise? Then if you are going to get back to your promise, then your surrender, you ha- it has to be carried with obedience in the Lord. In the 70s, we used to sing a song back in Eden, I'm free from all fear and I'm free from all sin. But the singer was trying to say, now I'm going back to Eden. To Eden. Why? Because I was chased out of Eden because of Adam. But now I'm free from all fear and I have no sin. I want to go back to what was promised to Adam and he and Eve. Submission. They commit themselves to a life of submission. This man promised to follow the leadership of God's man. Just as they had followed Moses, they committed themselves to following Joshua. Now listen. Well, I believe that there is a certain amount of authority invested in the pastoral office that I hold and the other pastors that hold with me here. And that the people of God ought to follow the man of God as he follows God's will for the church. There is a higher authority that every person in this room must acknowledge. And that is God. That we can submit to God and to God alone. Because men can error. Men can error. So even as we submit to the men, we need to submit to the higher authority so that God can... You know, a couple of years ago, there is a, a, a group in America that killed themselves because they were told to do so. And the priest is the one who died last. He first of all gave them poison and they all died. Then he killed himself last. He did not want the truth to be known. But he, he, he caused them to commit that kind of murder and he killed themselves. There is a higher power. So Joshua, these people are going to follow you. But as they commit themselves to please show them the God who is able to do much more than we even think or imagine. Thirdly, they committed themselves to a life of separation because it is important. I want to go to Canaan again from this lesson this morning. I find that we walk in victory, but as we walk in victory, we must practice separation in our lives as well. Separation in our lives as well. Canaan is our land. The promise is already given. There is a call to claim it. So we can claim it. But before we claim it, we must have confidence in that God that we have trusted in. We must turn to and look to that God. Although Canaan is our land. What is it going to take you, my brother, my sister, whether you are listening to us or watching us from far or you are in church or in the tent or outside in the corridor? What will it take you to possess your canon. What will it take you to return to what God has promised you? Because I say it is already promised. It's for you to come and take it. But for you to take it, there must be a belief that you need to have. And there could be others here in this room that even as we talk, the things that we are talking, you are not even born again. So whatever canon we are talking about is not so clear to you. Because for us to get to Canaan, for us to get back to to Eden, for us to get back to what God has promised us, there must be a separation. We must turn our heart from where we, we look at ourselves in the flesh to submitting to God and his divine will. 
getting back to the promise that God has promised us. Yes, there is a call for you to claim it. And you know some of you have been claiming it, but nothing has happened. Let's put another spanner into the works. Have confidence in the God who has promised you or told you to claim it. Not only that, trust in him. Because whatever he has promised, he will bring it to pass. It might take a little while, but I want to have confidence in God. I want to return myself back to that place where I believed God for virtually everything. Virtually everything. You trusted God virtually for everything. Even a piece of bread, you trust God. Bosho. Sukumawiki, you trust God because there is no guarantee you're going to have it. But as we walk by, we relax so much that um, we think we can do without him that has provided for us. My prayer is that you and I will have confidence in that God because he has called us. We can claim the promises that he has given us. I don't know what God has promised you already. Are you claiming it? Do you have confidence in that God? Do you have confidence in that God? Don't just claim it. Do you have confidence in that God? Are you claiming healing? Do you have confidence that he can heal? So you don't uh, claim healing, but you have confidence in his ability to heal you. But I want you, from wherever you are, if you can join me in prayer, I want to believe that God, first of all, wants you to have a relationship with him where you are saying, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I have no canon to go to, but I, I know there is a promise that is there for me. And unless I receive you, I cannot get to my canon. So wherever you are, if you're not born again and you want to give your life to Jesus, I want to pray with you. And if you're in the tent or in the, in the sanctuary here or outside in the corridor, and you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you know what? Is not hard. And I want all of us to say this prayer after me. And including you that wants to give your life to Jesus. Please say this after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you. And today, I know I can claim my life back. Because my future is saving you. I need you, Lord, to save me. So that I can go back to that which you have promised me and that is life eternal I give my life to you now and receive you as my Lord and Savior from today I am yours in Jesus name if you have prayed that prayer the ashes all over if you spot one please talk to them and I want to speak to someone here because every message that comes, there must be some, there must be, God is speaking, if, if, if not you, he's speaking to me. Maybe this year you have been claiming something, but you have understood that you need now not only to claim, you need to trust God. Remember you have claimed it, but you are trusting finances to come from relatives and friends or a big man somewhere. But you have known this morning that yes I can claim it but claiming is not enough I want to have confidence in God who can is that the prayer that you want to believe God for so if you have been claiming and now you, you want to join me in having confidence in God I want you to stand on your two feet from wherever you are yes you have claimed it but now you want to have confidence in God that it will come to pass. Gracious Heavenly Father, all over this building and outside in the tent and in the corridor, and I want to believe in our homes when we are, wherever we are watching, men and women, dear Father, are standing up. Dear Father, for claiming the things that they have claimed, they want to shift the gear and start having confidence in you. 
Heavenly Father, we want to rebuke every fear, every doubt, every confusion from the devil. And we want to have confidence in God. It has started, but it will come to pass. It has not shown up at the door, but my healing is knocking. It is coming in the name of Jesus. My provision is on the way. My miracle is just about to happen. Lord God, my finances are locating me in the name of Jesus. My peace in my family is knocking in the door and I'm ready to receive it. I have confidence in you. My promotion is on the way. Nobody can stop it because I'll have confidence in you. I want to walk in that confidence the rest of this month, month of August. And I want to believe that God, every man standing, Lord God, those that have waited long enough, this is the month that you surprise them in the name of the Lord. They will have a testimony that they are not only claiming it, but they are having confidence in God who can meet them at the point of their very need. We give you honor and we give you praise. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord praise in the house. Hallelujah. May it happen to you. May you receive your miracle. May you receive that which you have been longing for. May the Lord pay you a visitation like he did to Solomon when he visited him and blessed him. May the Lord do the same to you in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord praise and sit down. Let's get seated.